Hello, my name is Chad Buck, and my YouTube channel is called um, Mr. Judadan. That's because um, my name is Chad Buck, and I'm of the tribe of Dan, and I love the tribe of Judah because the tribe of Judah is where Jesus, my Messiah, has come from. See, the rest of the Danites on the earth. They're, they believe that if the last king of Israel, or the last king of Jerusalem, of Judah, has been killed, well, by biblical law, the birthright belongs to the tribe of Dan. Not Ephraim, not the, not the son from the woman that you love the most. Um, that would be against the law. So... That's why you don't see 12,000 Danites listed with 144,000, okay? But I'm not going to run from that. A lot of people say that the Antichrist comes from the tribe of Dan. Well, I'm of the tribe of Dan, and the Holy Spirit told me in my heart, don't you have to be Antichrist to be Antichrist? And then, how do you feel about the Christ? I love Jesus. Jesus is the Messiah. And see, I know that Jesus still lives. He died on the cross, but he rose from the dead. And I live in him, and he lives in me, and we live in the Father by the Spirit. And we are one. Just like he prayed in the garden, in the book of John. So, um, that being said, I don't shy away from being of the tribe of Dan. Just because there is not 12,000 of them listed in Revelations amongst 144,000. Okay, now again, um, I'm not a teacher. I'm not a preacher so much. I'm just going to, um, I'm just a sheep, a lamb, one of God's lambs on the world, trying to avoid getting his hoof ripped off, his meat stripped off, and his bones thrown in a pile. So I have come out of the pagan sun god corporations that you would call church. Because I find that those churches are really practicing a pagan solar deity religion in the name of my king. I can't abide by that. Um, so, I want to discuss a few things, and I want to ask a few questions, and maybe get your take on the matter. Okay. Now, first of all, regarding the feast days of the Lord, I'm talking about the feast days of Israel, the feast days of God that we're all supposed to keep from generation to generation, wherever you live. Okay, I want to talk about those things a little bit. Okay, now this is my question. When, were, when was God's feast days supposed to happen? At their appointed, what? Yes, their appointed times, okay? Now I want you to understand something about the calendar system that we've been taught to use. We've been taught to use, like here in the Western world, we fought, we've been trained to follow the ancient Baal system, which is the sun god arm of the Satan, satanic system that um, Nimrod and Samaramis came up with. Okay, The Baal is the sun god. Okay? And the, the days in his year are 365.25, okay? And then, over here on the eastern side, over, where um, the Jews and the Muslims, <clears throat> Mesopotamia, well, well, they're the Ashtaroth arm of the satanic system that um, Nimrod and Samaramis came up with. And it has 354 days in it. So, um, 
I just want to get to understand that, okay, the pagan sun god system, you can recognize it because it has all the names of Babylonian pagan gods on it. Okay? It's, um, it's really a false, um, completely false. And if you do the history on the Gregorian Julian calendar, you'll find it's been changed over 111 times to meet the whims of whatever Roman emperor or popes that wanted their birthday to be in summer all the time. So, so we come to understand that the Santa Claus, the Easter, and all that crap is of the devil. So then what we do is we, we go, well, where do we go? And we go to those Jews. And, and we go to the Hebrew calendar. But let me tell you something about the Hebrew calendar. First of all, the pagan sun god calendar has a leap day every four years. Something the Bible has never, ever even mentioned. Okay? And then, you got on the Ashtoreth side, the lunar thing, they keep a lunar calendar with 354 days with a um, leap month every so, calculated every so, uh, 12, 13 years, I don't know exactly what, but um, so that the, the, both calendars stay fixed to the equinox, okay? which is the natural cycle that God set up for the rebellious people to have time to repent. But the natural system was never meant to be the system that the faithful of God keep. You see, one's lunar, one's solar. And they're both two arms of the same dragon. It's the dra it's the 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 Baal arm. The the Baal arm and the Ashtoreth arm is what's used to scoop the people into the dragon's mouth. Okay, and my point being on this is that um, when was God's feast days supposed to happen? At their appointed what? Yes. Their appointed times. Okay. Now, I want you to understand the difference between these two calendar systems. Okay. The, the Baal one is 365.25, which is leaning to the right of the 360. Um, degrees of a circle okay then I want you to know that the 354 day calendar the lunar one it um, is six days short so it leans to the left okay the path is straight folks the path is straight and this is what I'm trying to prove first of all Exodus 23 verse 13 states that the names of heathen gods are not even to be found on your lips. Let me ask you a question. What's today's date? Is it? Think about it. What's today's date? Can you even say what today's date is without letting a Babylonian god come name come out of your mouth? Okay. So we know that the <clears throat> the western side, the Gregorian Julian calendar, each one of those names of the month is, is a pagan god name, except for the ones that are named after numbers. But, bottom line, pagan is, is as pagan does. Okay, so we come out of that, and then we're tempted to go to the Jew. So we go to the Jew, uh, and we... We're really excited. You know, we watch Michael Rood and we watch these people, you know, these this messianic movement, which I love those brothers. They've they've got a lot of stuff going on for them. But I think they've missed the mark on a few things. Okay, I think a deeper look needs to be met. Okay, first of all, let's take a look at the Hebrew calendar for a second. Okay, now let me ask you, what are all those 
names on there. The name they name the their months too. And what are they? They name them. Okay, what's that word Tammuz? Why is the fourth month called Tammuz? That's a pagan god name, and it's not even to be found on your lips. And if you do a further word study on all of those names that the Hebrew calendar is named after, you'll find that they're all really Persian in origin. Because that Hebrew calendar is not Hebrew at all. It's in fact Persian which is a similarity of the Babylonian. Okay, hence you get all these months called like Tishri. Okay, and weird because in the Bible it's commanded that the first month is your new year. But these Jews keep their new year in the seventh month. Weird. But that's neither here nor there. Okay, but my question is, okay, the... The feast days of the Lord were to come at their appointed times, okay? Now, they're to come at their appointed times, okay? Now, I'd like everybody to go, like if you got a Bible, I want you to turn to Revelations 11, okay? Now, the church has been, I'm um, telling everybody that, who. Oh, that's the ancient prophetic calendar. That's the prophetic calendar of God. While all of us humans are led to keep either the pagan sun god calendar in the name of Jesus, or we're taught to keep, or we run from that when that's exposed, and we go to the Jews, <clears throat> to the Hebrew system. Okay. Um, um, so we like escape the Santa Claus only to get bumped into the Easter Bunny. Okay. So, um, now, um, the feast days are of God are supposed to come at their appointed times. Okay. Now, I want you to understand something. What it says in Revelations 11, it, I'm not going to read it all. You, you know the math, and I'm sure you know the scriptures. But, Revelation 11 says... That 42 months is equal to 1,260 days. Not 1,261, not 1,259. I'm telling you that you do not add to God's word and you do not subtract from it. So, understanding that, and that is at the Tav of the Bible. That is at the Omega of the Bible. Now we go to the Aleph of the of the Bible to the um, Alpha of the Bible. And we do a study on Noah's Ark. And we do a little bit of math there. Um, where 150 days we find is equal to 5 months. Which is proving that Noah who was found faithful in his generation, found righteous in his generation, he was keeping the law of God and keeping a true year of 360 days. 30 days a month, 12 of them. Okay? So we find out that from the beginning of the book, he's using a 360-day calendar. And then we go to the end of the book. And he's using a 360-day calendar. Now, say the feast days of God was supposed to be at their appointed times. Well, this is the clue, folks. And this is going to take some math on your part and a little bit of study. But the flat-out deal is that a time times and half a time is equal to 1,260 days, which is equal to 42 months. That proves that the feast days of God are to be calculated using a 360-day calendar that has nothing to do with the new moon. Okay? Let me tell you something. If you go to the 